Okay, guys, let's start with domain three. Okay, so domain three is basically information system acquisition. Okay, so we know the definition of information system very well. Okay, so when now when we talk about information systems acquisition, okay, when you are acquiring those systems, okay, in terms of services and process and IT components, okay, when either you are developing those in your organization or finally or obviously when you are acquiring or you are developing you are basically implementing it also okay so before implementing you either acquire the system from a third party or through uh, through outsourcing okay or you develop in house okay and then you implement it so there are steps to acquiring there are steps to developing and there are steps to implementing whether you have acquired or developed in house or outsourced okay now this chapter basically talks about information systems acquisition development implementation and provides an overview of the key processes and methods used by the organization when creating and changing application systems it's it's either building new or it's about upgrading the existing application systems and information uh, infrastructure components okay which is basically information systems okay now this is thankfully uh, i would be a very happy person if that would have been uh, you know earlier than what i have given the exam this has become is very reduced so it was around 27% earlier okay and this has been reduced to 12% i'm very happy because this this was one of the toughest domain which i have uh, ever encountered uh, out of these five domains so it has reduced to 12% lot of things uh, though has been moved to domain 1 with the latest version upon completion of this domain the auditor should be able to evaluate whether the business case for proposed changes to information system meet the business objectives now uh, first and foremost when you are acquiring anything or you are developing anything you have to present a business case it's a benefit realization document okay it's a statement or it's a, it's a document which tells you okay why do you want to invest in this system okay so it basically you have to evaluate whether those benefit realization has been done properly okay whether the benefits which you are trying to incur has been documented properly and has been evaluated properly or not okay then as an auditor you may also evaluate the organization project management policies and practices because when you are developing or acquiring new systems it's it's a project for you okay so you have to see whether those pmo guidelines or the project management office the processes around the project management are adequate or not okay so similarly what we did for quality management also so you see whether the quality management policies and practices are adequate and then you evaluate uh, th then you see that whether you know that has been followed or not similarly here you you have to check the project management policies and practices and then see whether they are following the project management policies and practices or not then evaluate the controls at all stages of the information system development so there's there obviously there are controls in place okay to ensure better value better benefit realization or risk optimization is there okay so you evaluate the controls at all stages okay for example in terms of business case in terms of rfps uh, request for proposal for all those controls are there so even in terms of vendors selection of suppliers etc okay there are certain controls which are in place to ensure that you are doing the right thing you are reducing the risk to the organization okay so for example in the selection of the vendor you have certain criteria for selecting vendors why do you have that criteria that is a kind of a control okay in terms of maybe the financial background of the vendor the security of the vendor the process quality of the vendor you know all those are basically the controls at the stages of the development life cycle okay or acquire uh, or when you are acquiring a new service from the vendor so those are the controls then evaluate the readiness of the information system for implementation so either you acquire once you acquire the system or you develop in house you have to before the uh, the system gets live into production you have to check the readiness okay and what is the role of the auditor here the auditor is basically see whether the readiness has been uh, you know ensured readiness of the information system has been ensured then conduct post implementation reviews okay once the system has been running live in the production okay you you would you might do as an auditor you may might be asked to conduct a post implementation review of the system 
to determine whether the project is delivering as per the intended purpose okay whether the controls uh, are adequately in place and the requirements may be legal regulatory contractual requirements are met so that's a basic process of readiness only i would say okay you would, you would evaluate the change management configuration management release management and patch management policies and practices so these are some of the processes these are some of the processes which are there in development and acquisition also in, in the implementation so uh, but though this this process we also we will also discuss in detail in the domain 4 also okay which is change management configuration management release management patch management so we'll, we'll discuss this in detail in terms of operations and maintenance of information system because that's where it actually fits very well okay these are some of the topics uh, which we would study so what is information system acquisition and development okay so first and foremost we'll talk about the project governance and management we know what is the difference between governance and management so governance is basically the board of directors okay and the management is the ceo and then we'll study what is business case okay how do we evaluate business case okay what what are the parameters to check in the business case to see whether it has been you know documented properly or not then there is a feasibility analysis which is also done before the business case okay before you develop a business case before you invest the money you do the feasibility analysis okay then you have system development methodologies so there are multiple methodologies which are there in the industry okay there is devops there is agile there is there is waterfall etc etc those there 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 are those types no one would ask you questions what is water waterfall what is devops what is agile okay uh, but they would basically see that how you apply them somewhere okay then control identification and design okay uh, now control identification is what control to be fit in the uh, in that particular scenario and what should be the control environment okay which is the basically the design of the control uh, and the design should be effective basically then we talk about information system implementation okay testing methods uh, configuration and release management okay that is after the implementation you do the configuration and release management then system migration infrastructure deployment and data data conversions then post implementation reviews okay so for an auditor or an is auditor to provide assurance assurance is the as i said assurance is level of confidence okay for an, for an is auditor to provide assurance that the organization objectives are being met okay by the management practices of its information systems okay it is important for the auditor to understand how the organization evaluates develops implements maintains and disposes of its information systems and related components okay so to see to have a to have a level of confidence in the organization's objectives okay you know uh, in the organization objectives that they are being met by that information system it is very important for the auditor to evaluate the development implementation maintenance and disposal of information systems and related components so let's talk about project governance and management okay the first and foremost thing is the project roles and responsibilities okay what is a project project is a structured set of activities concerned with delivering a, a delivering a defined capability okay that is necessary but not sufficient to achieve a required business outcome okay project is basically something which is which has an agreed upon schedule okay and also which has a specific budget okay the project should be have a start date and an end date and a budget okay that's the general pmo definition project management office definition of the project project portfolio is a set of projects owned by a company okay it usually includes the main guidelines related to each project okay its portfolio basically gives you all the projects in a dashboard okay and it tells you okay what are the objectives of each project with that cost timeline and other information specific to the project okay this is a technique called pert which is program evaluation review technique so project management technique used in planning and controlling of the system projects we'll talk about what is pert and what are other techniques also in our future slides then there's another term called programs okay so uh, let's look at the difference between the project and the program Pro project we also know has specific objective deliverable start and end date okay where a program is a group of projects that are closely linked to each other through a common objective for example information security program there could be multiple projects in the information security program but the common objective is to ensure information security is maintained for the organization as per the information security policy okay 
So they put, so this is a overall of, of program. In that program, there could be multiple projects. Okay, uh, projects are always time bound, usually broken into explicit phases. Uh, programs are more complex; they are not time bound. I feel because information security program would always remain in an organization; it's not going everywhere. There could be multiple projects which can, you know, come and go. Okay, uh, in terms of their timelines. Okay, program usually have a longer duration. Okay, higher budget and higher risks and have higher strategic importance because program is very much linked. For example, as I said, program is linked to the information security policy and that policy is basically linked with the business, linked to the strategic objectives of the organization. Okay, so it has a higher strategic importance. Now, these are the steps for the project management. Okay, now what could be the, uh, the these are generic processes in PMBOK. Initiating the project, planning, executing, controlling, and closing. Now, when analyzing the context of a project, the auditor must consider following things. First and foremost, the importance of the project in an organization, how this particular project is serving the organization to meet its objectives. Okay, connection between the organization's strategies and the project. Then, relationship between the project and other projects. There's a possibility that one project is is dependent on some other project, okay? So what is the relationship between one project to another? What is the dependencies? Then connection between the project and the underlying business case, the connection between the project and the benefit what it is getting from that project. Project context, environmental factors. So these are some of the critical environmental factors when you are starting with a project. First and foremost is the common objectives of the organization for the organization. Okay, the risk really we tend to forget about mentioning the project risks. Okay, but generally organizations do have, uh, you know, specific area of project risks, which they calculate, okay, in terms of maybe time and resources. Okay, resource connections is very important. Okay, then moving on to uh, the next thing, project organization. So there are multiple types of project organizations. Okay, first is functional structured uh, organization. Okay, now what is functional structured organization? So here in the functional structure of organization, the project management has only a staff function. Okay, whereas in uh, project structured organization, it, the, the project manager is, is more involved. Okay, is, is more uh, involved in the project. Okay, in the design part. Okay. And then there's a matrix structured uh, project organization, which is a mix of both the functional structured organization and the pro uh, project structured uh, organization. Roles and responsibilities. So as part of the audit function, you should have an active part in application development projects, often as control experts. Now, why do auditors require there to be control experts? Because they have the ability to get into the granularities of how the control functions. Okay, so they are basically the outsider. They give the outsider view of the of how the control should be placed. Okay, control experts. The CEO should be familiar with general roles and responsibilities in project management. So, uh, in terms of you would look at how, what is the role of the senior management, user management. Okay, project chairing committee. Okay, what what is the role of the project chairing committee? So it basically gives an overall direction to the project so that can we can achieve the intended outcomes okay then the project sponsor provides the funding for the project okay and it it works very closely with the project manager okay and then we have the system development project manager as we talked about earlier what how uh, you know what kind of it depends on what kind of project organization it is okay then we have the user project team Okay, user project team is the UAT team or the user management team, okay, which is basically the final owner of uh, the system. Okay, generally uh, they are the representatives from the teams uh, who will be using the project. Okay, then you have the security officer and the information security engineer who would look at the security controls uh, in the project. Okay, then there is quality assurance we talked about earlier, okay, which provides the, which basically reviews the results and deliverables in each phase of the SGLC life cycle. Very important project communication. Now, why communication is important? Can you tell me? Because it builds up the project culture, okay? It, it gives the, you know, uh, it's, it gives a taste to the project culture, okay? 
Now there could be one on one meetings, there could be kickoff meetings. Okay, then there is project start workshop. Okay, which you where you call all the stakeholders, you discuss these, you discuss the project uh, deliver project plan. Uh, you discuss that what is the expectations from the stakeholders and what kind of things, uh, what could be the delivery, what would be the deliverables of the project, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, you you discuss that in the project start workshop. Then, or you can have a combination of all the above. Okay, now communication should be open, clearly presented, and documented. Okay, 